welcome to episode 13, Redfield, Cliff, and Marshall. I was not anticipating this hike 24 hours ago. I thought I was actually gonna do the Dix Ranger Allen, but with the trails being so perfect and the temperatures well above freezing, I knew that this place was completely broken out. And uh, so I was like, you know, I'm just gonna get out of the way. And it's a nice cloudy, gloomy day. Temperature's right around 35 degrees. And uh, we have about 22 and a half miles, I believe, with about five and a half thousand feet of gain. Today, we're gonna go hit Redfield first, then Cliff, and then back down, maybe through the Cliff Bushwhack, uh, to the flowed lands if it's there, if it's broken out. And then uh, from there, up to Marshall and out. It is somewhat gonna kind of be just me today a little bit. I have my buddy here, Nick Field, holding the camera. Um, we are coincidentally doing uh, Redfield and Cliff at the same time, so we decided to hike in together. Thank you guys so much for being in this series with me, the single season winter 46. Today is number 33, 34, and 35. Real quick, thank you to Wyatt's Tex-Mex and High Peak Cyclery for sponsoring this winter series. In fact, I have a Wyatt's burrito with me and I'm so excited to eat that at some point today. High Peak Cyclery also, I work there, so feel free to come by and say hi if you want. Awesome outdoor gear shop, ski center, uh, everything for your uh, 46 and your High Peaks needs. Without further ado, I'm gonna try to be back at the car at 4 p.m. We started at 6.15, so doing this in like 10 hours or so would be pretty ideal. So with that being said, let's go. First sign, Mount Colden, two miles to the left in the lodge, 6.4. The lodge, you could also go to the right over Marcy, but it's only 11.2 miles, you know. We have one and a half miles till we get to the turnoff for Redfield and Cliff. <laughs> I think this is gonna be where I uh, bid you adieu. <laughs> Already pretty winded. My knee's bugging me. It's gonna take my time going up this. I'm only doing Cliff and Ride anyway. I'm not psychopath doing Marshall like you. That's not psycho. That's not psychotic. You're not psychopathic, but you're definitely. Now, if I get cold in today, you're in better shape. Then, than then that would be psychotic. But true, true. Well, Nick here is about to finish his Winter 46. This is number 34 and sorry, this 44. is number 44 and 45, 45 for him, right. and then he's going to finish Haystack here in a couple weeks. So, yeah. good job for his Winter 46, man. Thank you. You get it. You deserve it. Anything you want to tell the people aspiring for the Winter 46? Eat it, Wyatt's. A lot of good energy. And uh, it's harder than you think. It's harder than you think. That's the one piece of advice. I it's have. harder than you think, but you can do it. True. You can do anything. Today is warm enough that I actually can use my uh, water bladder without it freezing on me. I got my insulated bladder hose from Osprey and it works great. It's always nice when you can do that because then there's less breaks. At uphill lean to now, this is the Marcy Trail right here to Four Corners to the right where it says, dig it, please bury human waste. This is the Redfield and Cliff turnoff. And here's the turnoff. Redfield, Cliff. It has started snowing, which isn't great for photography. I was really hoping to get a nice view of Allen today, so I don't know. It wasn't supposed to start snowing till like later this evening, but I'm gonna eat something real quick. Give me some energy before I head up the 1.2, which I actually think is 1.4 miles to the summit of Redfield. It is 9.15, exactly three hours from when we left the car uh, with about 15 minutes of stops. So we're looking at a two hour and 45 minute moving time so far. Uh, I'm hoping to get to the top of Redfield. It'd be nice to get there in 45 minutes. Be back down here, ideally like by 11. Getting up there now. Decent view. Snow's kind of in the way, but it looks like it's more clear that direction. We're less than a quarter mile from the top. The trees are starting to become white. Approaching the final stretch here. I am sweaty. <sighs> So as you look out, you have Alan 
right here. You have Sky Pond as well right there. And uh, you can barely down there see the uh, Redfield slide, what I bushwhacked up here on. Hmm. It took me 40 minutes to get up here. That was pretty fast. I have a few hikers with me today as well. The sign is about three and a half feet lower than normal. Normally the sign's about up here. But, uh, but Mount Redfield, single season winter 46, high peak number 33. All right, gonna check out the views over here. Wow, would you look at that? Would y'all just look at it? Incredible views. Woo! All right, well, let's, uh, let's just get back down there, try to do it in about 30 minutes. What's up? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, we'd meet you halfway up. <laughs> Watch out! Oh! <laughs> All right, well, GG's, and I will see you on my way down from Cliff. Yeah, uh, <laughs> probably, unless you take the bushwhack. Oh, oh, true, true, true. We'll see. In which case, I will follow you out. <laughs> I will definitely be taking those tracks if you do that. Whoa! Wow! Jeez! Oh! Oh. Oh. Well, my leg twisted in a way that it shouldn't have. Oh. Oh, oh gosh. 100% could have torn my ACL there. No, like I did, I didn't. I'm saying, like, I could have. Like, my leg, my the crampon on my snowshoe caught on the slide down, and it just, I went forward and my leg twisted. But, uh, yeah, it feels good. I think we're good. Back at the turnoff. It is 11.08. Made it down a little later than I wanted to, but I actually did quite a bit of stoppage. But uh, we're just gonna send it up now, the 0.9 miles to cliff. I'm switching to my mountain equipment shell because the snow is starting to make things a little wet. It's not entirely waterproof, but it is water resistant. So goal is to get to the top of cliff by 12 o'clock. I know the cliff on cliff uh, is probably gonna require my mountaineering ax. Approaching the cliff. It's getting really hot as you can tell, probably from the steam coming off of me. If you can see that, you might not be able to. I hope that with the snow falling on me, this merino wool layer will still breathe and dry off pretty well. Now, this cliff is not nearly as steep as people claimed. Well, at least the technical aspect of getting up. I don't know if that's because the snow is very grippy. All right, well, got past the cliff without the ax. Now we're gonna plateau for a bit and then go downhill to the cull and then up to the final ascent. Pretty certain this is where the uh, bushwhack down to the float lands would be. I think. Hmm. Well, let's get to the summit and then we'll see. Started running a little bit. <sighs> Approaching the summit right here. Cliff Mountain, single season winter 46, high peak number 34. 
Now, I just passed the two other people and we're debating whether or not we're gonna actually break out the coal, the drainage, bushwhack, to uh, the flowed lands. <laughs> Might pave the way for everyone else. Not sure, we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm gonna get off the summit. All right, Cliff, I will catch you in the summer. Let's head back down. All right, so they're over here and they just started trekking over to it and they just told me they found it. The snow is really caking up on my snowshoes though. So you said you found it? It's right here. Yeah, I think we're on it. Yeah. Right. You're really not sinking in that deep. Yeah, why don't you go ahead? So when we were coming up, I was looking and going, ah. This is Karen and Greg and uh, their, their fellow 46ers currently on their way to finishing the winter 46 as well. So let's head down to the Floodlands. It is 12 o'clock exactly. And um, not sure how long it will take us to get down. But we will see what happens. Nice. Oh, there it goes. This was really awesome. It's taken us about an hour so far and we're about three quarters of the way down. But we're on the distinct path now all the way back, so the hardest part's over. We definitely lost trail for a minute. Definitely didn't save a whole lot of time. Like, I mean, that's a pretty awesome bushwhack. Huge cliffs here on the side of cliff. Nice. Yeah. Here is the conjoinder path, the junction. Took us a solid hour and a half to get down. Maybe took us an extra 15 or 20 minutes than what it would take after leaving the summit, but. So Greg and Karen are gonna head back to the car and uh, this is a really wet snow. My camera's soaking wet, so I need to dry it off. Uh, but I'm gonna head this way back to Lake Holden. My lens is kind of fogged up. I guess I didn't bring my microfiber cloth with me to clean it up, but um, this is pretty much the only water repellent coat that I have and it's pretty soaked. I was not at all anticipating like this precipitation. Um, so I guess lesson learned. Um, when in doubt, bring a raincoat. I mean, I wasn't doubting though. Like, I mean, this is fine. It's pretty soaked. I'm not like colder. Like I'm kind of pretty dry underneath. But uh, I guess we still got to go get Marshall. <laughs> so I'm just going to eat a little bit real quick and then we're gonna get going. Unfortunately, my camera is very fogged up, but I got a Wyatt's burrito right here. I'm gonna devour this before we go. All right, it's 1.6 miles up to Marshall. <sighs> Hopefully we can do that in one hour, ideally, and down in an hour. And it's just after two, so we'll try to be back down at the bottom by four. Yeah, uh, man, wish I could have gotten there earlier. Well, well, I chose to do the bushwhack. Here's the way to Marshall. <sighs> All right, <coughs> let's send it, I guess. I am gonna put a fresh pair of gloves on. Nice and gradual, not too many bumps following the brook, for the most part. <sighs> this is much deeper than I remember. <sighs> Someone's trekking poles. They might have been there for a few days.
all this water is condensing on the trees and the snow and it's soaking me. Approaching the final push, almost there, we're an hour and 10 minutes in. Also, if it looks kind of foggy, it's because we're actually inside of the cloud now. So there's definitely not gonna be much of a view. Something also to note, all that wet snow, I don't think anyone's been up here today because it, it has all condensed, because it actually snowed and it didn't rain, and it's sticking to my snowshoes. So it's pretty, pretty wet, sticky snow. And out of nowhere, the sign. This right here is normally the view of the Shepherd's Tooth and Iroquois. Not today. <sighs> Mount Marshall. Mountain number three for the day. And number 35 out of the single season winter 46. Soaking wet. Now as you may be able to tell, like I just showed you, there's no view. So um, I'm going to change out my socks real quick because they're soaked. And then we're going to go check out the uh, viewpoint. All right, Mount Marshall. I'll catch you later. It is now 345. Spent a lot of time kind of getting my stuff situated. And I'm going to go look for that secret view. I, for some reason, did not see the turnoff. And uh, it's definitely unbroken. But um, I need to uh, get a picture, so... Here we go. Oh, no one has been to this viewpoint. Not sure why, because it's like the uh, piece de resistance of Marshall. There's the view. All right, well, let's go. Is Marshall. Time is 4:40. I am in a rush, but I really don't think I'm going to be able to make it to the thing that I wanted to get to back home because I also have to drive an hour and a half. Uh. One more time. The flowed lands. Man, Colden looks super cool. The time is 4:50. And I left the summit of Marshall right around four. So in 50 minutes, went from the summit of Marshall all the way back to the uh, flowed land sign. I think I have about four and a half miles from here to get back to my car. And four and a half miles, hour and a half later, at the trail. Twenty-two and a half miles, twelve hours, three eye peaks, and nearly six thousand feet of vertical gain. Later, it did take me a little longer than I was hoping it to. I think I did maybe about an hour of stop time, so I think in total it was eleven hours, which isn't bad considering that I did the bushwhack. Anyways, guys, I want to get going. Thank you so much for sticking in there. Episode number fourteen. I think I said episode 13 earlier, and that's a little awkward, but it's okay. Episode 14. Thanks again to High Peak Cyclery and Wyatt's Tex-Mex for sponsoring this series. Their links will be in the description. I'm Jonathan Zaharic. Don't forget to follow my Instagram and see all the exclusive behind-the-scenes 46er hiking stuff and my photo adventures and whatnot. So, we're almost there, guys. Almost there. See you next time.